What's up guys? Uh, by popular demand I'm gonna do a small video about my process of making imperfection and a bit about the history of the song. First off, just about uh, how it all came along. I've made the song back in 2018 as a preparation for the Street Parade. The Street Parade looks like this. It's like the biggest uh, electronic uh, open air in Switzerland and I think also in the whole of Europe. There's around 1 million people, so there's a lot of people. I've had my first gig there uh, on a big stage and I wanted to have a song that was appropriate for that style and uh, have a song that feels big and was great for the big stage and that's how Imperfection came along. I actually didn't finish the song for uh, for the Street Parade but uh, I left the song on my hard drive for about uh, four or five months and I've finished the song after a lot of my friends told me that the song had potential and then I, I finished the track about five, six months later and it ended up on the opportunity cost EP and we are already at 1 million plays on Spotify so thank you so much for that. I also will show you some older versions uh, in Ableton. I, I hope you can get something out of it uh, and learn some new stuff. Let's dive right into Ableton. So uh, here we are in Ableton. Uh, it's my favorite tool to use. Uh, I've used FL Studio before but uh, for electronic music I think Ableton is the best choice but you can use whatever you, you want to. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, here are some older versions. Uh, for this first version I had just had a different intro. It sounded like this. The drop was already the same, but the melody, uh, the intro was obviously still very raw and uh, didn't work on it uh, at all. So I've changed that all up. Um, and the second version that I found on my hard drive is this one, um, which already sounds pretty close to the original one, but I had different uh, vocal chops back then. So I will show you how they sounded. <laughs> Those were the first vocal chops and I've changed it up uh, in the end uh, uh, into the ones that you guys know that are that is on the original. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you the, all the parts of the song uh, of the original version and uh, yeah, let's dive right into it. First the drums. So I have uh, just a simple kick and a snare. I think the snare is a layer between two samples uh, from the Ramsoid pack. The, the samples sound like this. Yeah, I just uh, layered those and the kick is also, I think, from the Ramsoid pack, I'm not sure. No, from Ecoli, I think. Um, it's this one. Yeah, pretty basic. Um, mixed with some percussion that I uh, chopped up. Um, I use a lot of frequency shifter on all my drums. Uh, it's my favorite program. Um, it's also a good tool to just differentiate a lot of samples from the original because nowadays you hear a lot of the same sound bits of drums and the percussion so if you have frequency shifter it's really easy to just turn it up a bit or turn it down a bit and like that get, get a completely different sound. Here I have a, f a loop that I cut up a bit uh, and it sounds like this mixed together with a percussion loop um, that I put frequency shifter on, it sounds like this. Yeah, uh, and without the pr uh, frequency shifter it would sound like this. So it's just easy to just manipulate it a bit, as you can hear. And maybe even get, get, it, get, it, get it a bit more depth if, if the loop sounds too thin. Or the drum sample sounds too, too thin, uh, it's all, always nice to just frequency shift it a bit down and it gets a lot more depth like that. Um, I also have like a clock sample and uh, everything together sounds like this. Yeah, that's all to the drums and let's get into the sound. 
First off, I have a pad sample right here that sounds like this. And I made some uh, volume automations in the first part. Which makes it just, to, it makes it move a bit better in the song. Makes the whole thing more dynamic. Um, I think this one is a sample of uh, maybe Tokyo Soundscapes, I think. You have to check that, uh, that pack out. But a really nice way to do your own um, uh, pad samples, uh, which I do a lot of times, is to use Patchup. Um, Patchup is also the tool that I use to make the main sample. Uh, the main uh, main instrument for the main synth, but I will show you that later. But uh, if you have time to check out uh, um, Patch Up, you should do, because it's really easy to use and uh, it has a lot of effects. So it's a bit similar to the granulator, but it has more options. So if you just use any f any loop that you find, any sound loop that you could find on your hard drive, maybe I don't know this thing. You can just drag it into the patch up and then play around with the position and uh, and the duration and randomize it a bit. More duration. Drag the number up a bit. And you get a really nice uh, really nice um, soundscapes like this. Um, yeah, really good program. You should check it out if you have time. And um, the the next part is also with patch up, and it's the main synth, the one thing that you prob you guys are probably most interested about. And it's also really simple. It sounds like this. It's just two patch up layers uh, on top of each other. The first one sounds like this. And the second one sounds like this. So it's like the top part and the bottom part. And um, uh, what I've did is uh, you can go into patch up and if you don't want to do like a pad, you can also do just normal synth instruments with it. Uh, you have a library right here. You can go to patch up synths and waveforms, also this pack, where you have some really interesting um, sounds that are already preset and you can drag, drag them in and play a bit with the decay, sustain and release and with the position and number, all those, uh, all those parameters up here and you can get a lot of nice sounds. So that's just by messing around I got that uh, main synth. I don't, didn't do anything specific, it's just messing around with different sounds. And um, what makes the synth work so well in the song is that it opens up till the end. So it, it, it opens up with a lot of reverb until the end of the bar. And uh, that's just simple automation with RC48. It's my go-to reverb VST. And uh, as you can see, it's just a really simple um, automation in the back that opens it up completely. Yeah, just full range, mid ups, sides up. That's about it. I've made some small um, um, reverse cuts right here. That uh, like just uh, uh, glue it all together. It sounds like this. Yeah, uh, uh, then mix with a bass that is actually just a serum patch. Um, let's check it out. I've made this uh, sound just myself, really simple, uh, basic shapes here, basic shapes here. Um, yeah, I could do a separate serum tutorial, but I'm not the best pro at it, so I don't know how that's gonna go up, but uh, it's just really simple serum base, um, automated as well, so that the filter, um, that the decay opens itself uh, till the end of the bar, as well as the reverb of the main synth, so it goes along together. Yeah, that's all. Uh, this one is just a sub bass, really simple to give it more sub bass. And um, I've layered it on in the second part with a sign plant, and this one sounds like this. And it gives it a, a nice dissonance and makes it more rough. 
I can make a separate tutorial on Sign Plant because it's my favorite VST of all time. Um, and it's also really random, so you, it's not easy to program stuff, but you can, it's just like a science laboratory where you can find very weird sounds. Um, so I use Sign Plant in every single song of mine. Um, it's my favorite uh, VST of them all. And uh, yeah, this is just a random seed that I generated. Um, I can make a second tutorial for this uh, separately. So moving on to um, what is another patch of patch. Ah, it's, this one is just a layer for the main synth in the second drop. With a little bit of different uh, uh, um, uh, noting. Yeah, this just gives it more, it makes it bigger in the second drop, which helps you. You always have to step it up a notch in the second drop, um, that it sounds different. I have this ARP that I, uh, that I love, um, that is also made in Sign Plant. Um, also really nice, um, just a lot of reverb on it, nothing much with effects, just sign plant uh, uh, as always, just really special, re really special sounds. Um, as I said, I can do a tutorial on that if you guys are interested anytime soon. Um, that's about it for this synth. I've layered this ARP in the second part uh, with a repro synth, it sounds like this. which is an octave uh, lower than the original. Yeah, which just gives it uh, more depth and uh, makes it bigger. Um, uh, I have this chord right here, the main chord. Layered with a standard serum bass. And it's, as always, also just a sign plant, uh, a string type of uh, uh, um, preset. Um, you guys just have to mess around with uh, sign plant. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. You can generate random seeds, uh, and you get just get random sounds. Um, I don't know how it works. It's really weird. You can't really automate the DNA branches, which is kind of sad. But just check this one out. It's only about sixty bucks or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun to use this one. Down to the vocals. This is like the last and the most important part of the song. Uh, I, I wanted to actually record original vocals with a vocalist um, back then, but actually didn't really find anything that fit perfectly for this song. And also we were in a time rush to, to 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 finish the project so uh, we've just found a perfect sample from a sample pack uh, and I pitched it down and cut it into pieces um, put some effects on it this is like the original one it's just it's just uh, faster and uh, uh, and higher. But it also has uh, already has this like distorted effect on it, which I loved from the beginning, from the get go. And uh, yeah, I think this makes the song uh, f uh, glued together. Without those vocals, the song would probably sound boring. Um, I've made uh, some really basic vocal processing, uh, vocal chops uh, in the drop, with some panning effects right here, and. Uh, uh, a tool that I use a lot for vocal processing that you guys need is Little Ultra Boy. Um, uh, it's really simple um, uh, and it, it does a lot. So it's simple but it has big effects. Um, I can put it on here and uh, show you what it does real quick. Um, it just it, it, it puts the formant of, this, of the vocal down without pitching it. 
So it it's, makes it sound deeper. And you can also just change the pitch without changing the format. Which is cool. And you also have the robot feature, which I like as well. Which just keeps it at one at one note, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, and I also have like another uh, small sample right here, uh, which is this one. Just put a ton of reverb on it and pitch it down a notch. That's the original one. Um, yeah, um, and that's about it. Also, anyways, let me know if you want any tutorials. I can do whatever you guys like. Um, tutorials for vocal processing, drum processing, how I write my songs. Um, um, yeah, you, you just let me know what you guys would want to hear and want to listen to and watch. And uh, I'm gonna do that for you guys. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the little insight into how Imperfection was done. And uh, see you next time.